Hi everyone, Anat Kessler here with a new video tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to make a shadow box frame from a, a canvas. So I'm going to start with cutting the inside of the canvas or the front of the canvas with a craft knife. I want to turn the canvas into a frame so I need to remove the front of the canvas. So I'm going to glue the edges. I'm using a hot glue gun, but any glue will do. The best is to use liquid glue, of course. It needs to be strong. It needs to hold the canvas on the wood frame. And a shadow box frame is basically a 3D frame that you can insert things into and make it really cool. You can add photos and any 3D items with layering and lots of volume. Next I want to cover the frame with some paper. So for that I'm using gel medium and some papers. Thin papers will work best here. You can use napkins. If you don't want to cover the frame with papers you can Paint it with acrylic paints or spray it if you have sprays. If you're using the technique that I'm using, then simply apply the gel medium, which is also a type of glue, to your frame and then attach the paper. And when you attach the paper, if you need to tear it to fit around corners and around the frame, then do that. And then cover the paper with another layer of gel medium. This makes sure that it adheres properly and attaches properly to the frame. And also it seals it. So later on you can paint on it, you can spray on it, you can do whatever you want on it on the paper and it won't damage it. So I'm going to cover the entire frame with pieces of torn paper and then I'm going to move on to the next step. You can use whatever papers you have in your stash, whatever patterns, whatever colors you want. And of course, make sure that it matches your theme. So if you want to make a shadow box frame for a girl, you would maybe want to use girly colors and themes. If it's for a man, then you might want to use the theme of papers with more masculine colors or patterns, etc. So you get the idea. So I'm tearing pieces of paper to cover my frame and you can see how I'm layering them, slightly overlapping when necessary. Smaller pieces, larger pieces, whatever I need to cover the frame. So I'm going to continue doing that until the entire frame is covered. I'm not so worried about the back of the frame. It's going to be hanged on the wall. So the sides and the front are more important than the back. Sometimes shadow box frames are placed standing on a mantle or a shelf if they're thick enough, if they're wide enough and then you might want to do the back as well because maybe the back is visible but for this one you don't really have to. So now my frame is completely covered and I can move on to the next step. I just want to make sure that everything is dry before I attach my string 
I'm going to attach a string because I want to hang things on it later. And I'm going to use some cloth pins for that, little wooden cloth pins that you can find in craft stores. So I'm just using a string. And tying this. Make sure it's strong. And now what I can do is start adding some color. I want to spray it a little bit to add some colors to the papers that I've covered the frame. So a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, maybe a little bit of turquoise. Just adding a little bit of color. You can do this with acrylic paints if you want. And then I'm going to close back my shadow box frame. Remember how it used to look when it was a canvas? There was something on the front. So now I'm just adding a paper on the back of the frame, making sure that the paper I want to show, this is a double-sided paper, is going to face the table. So when I flip it, I have the paper that I want. And then I'm just going to add a cardstock on the back just to make it a little bit stronger and make sure that it's sealed properly. It's just a white cardstock. So now I can go ahead and start embellishing my frame. So again, it all depends on the theme that you have chosen for your frame. I'm going to make it sort of an outside scene. So I have here a felt tree that I'm going to attach. And I'm going to attach some birds and a birdhouse. So it's going to be like an outside scene but you can embellish your frame any way that you want and add any embellishments that you want that fit your theme of course. So this felt tree is very flexible. I can arrange it any way that I want on my frame. And then I'm going to add another tree for extra dimension it will look really cool. So it will look more like a view under the string. Okay, so now I'm going to use a die cut to cut the shape of a bird. If you don't have a die cut machine, then you can use a sticker of a bird or you can just print a shape of a bird from your computer, trace it on a piece of paper and then cut it out. Of course there are cutouts and chipboards and all kinds of things that come in bird shape that you can use. I just love this shape and I just wanted to use it so this is what I have in my stash. Of course you can use whatever you have in your stash. So. I always try to use what I have in my stash, in my craft stash, so I'll maximize my supplies and won't buy new supplies whenever I start a new project. So that might require a little bit of thinking, how to incorporate everything that I want in my project, but still, this way I know that whatever I have, I use. Okay, so I'm removing all the little bits and pieces. I just want to ink the edges a little bit. It will make the bird pop out and be more visible. It also has little wings. Now I can assemble the birds on my frame.
So one is going to go on the left side, and I think the other one is going to go on the right side. So they'll be sitting on that string like birds on a wire. So my shadow box frame is almost ready and you can see that once you have that in-depth space you can add lots of embellishments in there and make your frame look really pretty with all kinds of 3D additions to it. So I'm adding those little two birds there on the treetop and I'm just adding little eyes with a black pen. These are the wooden cloth pens that I'm just adding a little bit of dimension with Distress Ink. They're going to go on that string and now when I have a note or something that I want to hang, I can do that. And then it's going to look really pretty hanging on the wall above my desk. And I want that string. I'm not cutting it, I'm just attaching it to the frame. Don't worry, the glue dries clear, so there's no problem with that. Just adding a few flowers next. Again, it's all a matter of the way you want your design to look, what kind of embellishments you want, but the idea is to create a 3D frame you can, instead of making that large tree, you can add a photo in there and then embellishments around the photo and it will look really, really pretty to give to someone as a gift or hang it on your wall. I'm just adding a few flowers and then I think my project will be finished. Maybe I'll spray it a little bit more. Just matching the colors of the flowers to the colors that are already there on the papers and on the birds. Everything is going to match. I really hope you like this tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the little bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. This way you won't miss anything and you'll be able to follow all the tutorials and make all the projects can also go back and watch all the other video tutorials on my channel. There are lots and lots of video tutorials there. So don't forget to subscribe. I'm adding a little birdhouse to complete my project. Complete the theme and think that will make my project ready. really like how this turned out. It's really cute. Maybe a few more flowers. Just to make sure that I like the result. Okay, just a final spraying just to make everything look cohesive and coordinated. Okay, I really like this project. I really hope you liked it too. Again, please don't forget to subscribe and watch all the other video tutorials on my channel. This is the project for today. Thank you very much for joining me. And I will see you next time.